And we're going to go start by going over last night's homework, which was just a few um, short answer regions questions. So you can kind of get an idea of what they're going to be like. Um, I was watching some people do this. Um, they had some time in my uh, one of my other classes to get started on this. And the first thing was, I heard people kind of panic based on the, this graph. This looks like a whole bunch of stuff. You have no idea what it's talking about. And I'll, I'll tell you, you probably don't have much idea what this is about. Again, always read all the words. Base your answers to 54 through 56 on the diagram of Bowen's reaction series below, which shows a sequence of which minerals crystallize as magma cools and forms different types of igneous, sorry, got lost, igneous rocks from the same magma. The arrow shows each mineral represents, sorry, I cannot read. The arrow for each mineral represents the relative temperature range at which that mineral crystallizes. So they're saying this is the same magma that's going to crystallize. Here it's at high temperatures. Here it's at low temperatures. So the last to crystallize. Here's the rock type that crystallizes at those different temperatures. And they said the arrow represents the entire temperature range at which that mineral crystallizes. So again, still kind of above your heads, but we're gonna just take it a bit by bit, see how it works. According to Bowen's reaction series, how is the chemical composition of plagioclase feldspar found in basaltic rock different from the chemical composition of plagioclase feldspar found in granite rock? So taking this um, bit by bit, so we want first found in basaltic rock. Sorry, I didn't want that pen. So first compare it to basaltic rock to granite. So here's basalt. Here's the minerals that are in basalt. And here are the minerals that are found in granite. So what does it say according? So what do we want to, according to this, how is the chemical composition different? So you could say that the basaltic contains, this is the, actually the easiest answer right there. The basaltic contains more calcium. It's written right there. Let's see the exact answers that they allowed for this. So question 54, the only answers I could have set, accepted, actually it says acceptable, but not limited to. So plagioclase feldspar in the basaltic rock is more calcium rich. Plagioclase feldspar in granite rock contains more sodium. And yeah, so they basically say the two of the same thing. So the key is basalt has more calcium, granite, has more sodium. All right, question 55. So again, what would you have written? Start for 54. Basaltic is more calcium. Did they say calcium or CA? They said calcium. That's literally all you had to write for that. Now question 55, describe the temperature conditions shown in Bowen's reaction series that explains why olivine and quartz are not usually found in the same igneous rock. Here's the olivine, here's quartz. Why won't we find them in the same rock? Different temperatures. Um, so I would have said that they crystallize at different temperatures. That's a, that says different, it just has. Yep, that they form at different temperatures. This would have been the key that they would have given us. It says allow one credit for, but not limited to. The minerals crystallize at different temperatures. Olivine is the first. There you go, olivine forms at higher temperatures, but different would have been good enough. So this is how they tell us to grade it. They give us these options. And then as long as it says, but not limited to, we can have a little bit of wiggle room as long as your answer says basically that. So that's a perfect answer. And question 56, identify one similarity and one difference between the igneous rock, andesite and diorite. Uh, 
andesite and diorite right here. Can we see a difference from this chart? Does this tell us anything different between andesite and diorite? It does not. They show them basically as the same rock. So where would we find the difference between andesite and diorite? That is an ESRT question. So this is how they're going to do these kinds of questions. They'll give you a chart or a reading or a picture. Combine that with using just that chart and your reference table and your regular old knowledge of earth science. So here's andesite and diorite right there. Biggest difference I'd say is andesite is extrusive, diorite intrusive. You could have said they're crystal. Are we doing difference? I'm sorry. <coughs> Similarities first. What is the similarity between these two? Okay, they are both igneous. Let me see if that is, I don't think that's good enough though. Does it? Okay, let me see. Exact. Yeah, I think one difference between the igneous rocks and similarities. So yeah, it couldn't be as basic as they're both igneous. But according to this chart, what's the same about them? Oh, you can't see that. Cord, here we have two. What's a similarity right off this reference table? Uh, nope, they're not both. They're actually not both vesicular. They're both non-vesicular. Same, same, same color, same density, same composition, same minerals. That any of those would have been acceptable. So similarity, similar color. You only needed one. Density. Difference, I already started that one. The main would be they were one's in extrusive, one's intrusive. We have different crystal sizes, different texture. different crystal size. Uh, oh, I need to write different because it is different. It's different texture or different environment of formation. So always use the picture reading diagram, whatever, and then add your reference table and then add little tidbits you know about earth science in general. All right, 57. Again, looks overwhelming <coughs> because we got a lot of stuff going on here. Always start by reading the words. Base your answers to 57 through 61. On the diagram and tables below, the diagram shows a sample containing fossils from a location in New York State at 42 degrees north, 78 degrees, 15 minutes west. Fossils one, two, and three, and four are labeled. Table A lists the names of the rock types in the New York State rock units from the middle and late Devonian <coughs> to this area. The presence of fossils one, two, three, and four in a rock unit is indicated by an X. The fossil columns in the table B identify the typical rocks formed within the different marine ocean environments. So that was a whole lot of talking or reading at least. A lot of going on in the picture. We got a rock with different fossils. We've got the time period it's from, the name of the rock and where it formed and whether the fossils are there. Then another types of rocks down here. So let's just move on. On the map, in your answer booklet, paste an X at the location where the rock sample was collected. If you hadn't have read this, would you have any idea where this rock came from? That's why it's always important to read the words. 42 degrees north. So that means it is straight on the 42 north. Here's 42 degrees north. It's somewhere on that line. And then 78 degrees, 15 minutes. Here's the 78 line. Where's 78, 15 though? 
Remember, this is like a clock. What is halfway between 78 and 79? How many minutes? 30, because it's just like a clock. There's 60 seconds from here to here. I'm sorry, there's 60 minutes from here to here. So this is 78.30, so we're 78.15 in between them. So and did it tell us to put an X or a dot? It says to place an X. And guys, as stupid as it is, if they tell you to put an X and you put a dot, they're gonna mark you wrong. So you have to read the words and do what they say. 58, rock, kind of rock unit. Based on the fossils present, the rock sample shown in the diagram came from which rock unit listed in table A? So name of rock unit, these are our choices. We have to figure out which one this could be. How could we go about doing that? What up here is going to tell us anything about this rock? So can we tell by looking at this how old it is? Not really. The ESRT could, there's actually an easier way. So the easiest thing is going to be to look at these fossils. We, is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay, so we've got rock. This rock has fossil one, fossil two, fossil three, and fossil four in it. Could it be this Kanawango rock? According to the chart. No, because it's missing fossil three. Could it be this one, this, no. The only one that contains all four fossils is this Canada Way rock. So the answer for that one is Canada Way. So you just use the information that is in the picture to tell us where the rock, what one it could be. Identify the New York State Index Fossil Group that includes fossil four, and sh four shown on the rock table. Foss index fossils, that is this reference table. Fossil four looks like that. I don't know what you wanna say that looks like, but you have to find that along the bottom. If you find it, it looks like letter Z. So letter Z, it wants a fossil group. That's this column. These are the fossil groups. So there's Z. Z is a bronchiopod. So this is a lot of work for these answers. This is why you get so much time to take this test. 60, identify the landmass that collided with the eastern coast of North America to create the Acanian Mountains mountain range and the basin for the deposition of the Devonian rock units in table A. They are all from the Devonian. So you just use your knowledge here, Devonian. What collision happened? That's listed right here. Collision of North America and Avalon. That is what we're looking for. Oh, we already said it already told us North America, so we only need the Avalon part. A V And the last question, according to the tables, which marine environment was the Tully rock unit deposited? So here's the Tully. It was deposited in, yep, limestone, just making sure that was as simple as that answer. Oh, so it was made, it was made in limestone, but it wants what marine environment? So you have to see where limestone was made, clear shallow water. So it was a two-parter. Oh, can't smell water. So again, where did I get that from? Here's the Tully. It was made in limestone. Where was limestone made? Limestone in clear, shallow water.
So those are the types of questions you'll get for the second half of the test. For the rest of today, we are going to practice more moon phase stuff that we did yesterday. Did I skip one? That wasn't homework, just 54 through 61. We haven't learned 51 through 53 yet. That's why you struggled. Yeah, we'll learn 51 through 50 or 51 through 53 next week. That's why I had you skip those. So we're going to continue on with moon phases. We're going to pick up exactly where we left off. And I have an 11 question uh, sheet for you. I'm just going to tell you now, whatever you don't finish now in class will be homework. So your homework will be to finish that moon phase worksheet. 